Hello, welcome back again. Today I'll briefly talk about a very important topic that I get a lot of queries about, and that is just the basic questions about how to go about learning literary theory. And most of what I'll be saying uh, in this brief lecture is based in my own experience of teaching literary theory. And uh, the way I teach it, but the reason I want my students to learn theory is basically to encourage them to look at literary texts and other texts with an understanding of not just what is in the text, but also questioning as to why are they reading a text a certain way. And I think theory allows us to do that. It allows us to learn about our learning practicing practices themselves, but it also allows us to look at the same, same text from different angles. And uh, that is why uh, I encourage my students in my literary theory class to not just go uh, you know, sequentially from one theory to another, but also to broaden their knowledge of various debates of literary theory. So the basic first and foremost, what you want to learn is, you know, first of all, what is theory? What does that do? And for that, I would encourage you to watch my uh, lecture on Terry Eagleton's uh, introduction. I'll post a link here because I think Terry Eagleton uh, wonderfully explains even the arbitrary nature of how we define theory and literary studies. But to know what different methodologies are there, what different schools of theory are there, what is new criticism, what is functionalism, what is formalism, what is structuralism, post-structuralism, all these isms. So basically, first you want to learn what basically are different schools of thought and theory and what are their main attributes, what do they propose one needs to do while using theory or while reading literary texts. And you can familiarize yourself <coughs> with them through any online sources or anything. And uh, the link that I'll post down here to my course already has links to such uh, places on the web. But that alone is not going to help you because it may you might learn what new criticism is. But what you want to learn is how to perform new criticism. And that you cannot do just by learning the mechanics of new criticism, right? You can only think like a new critic if you read what the new critics wrote about what new criticism is. So how do I teach these things is I have two texts that I use in my literary theory classes. One is, of course, Terry Eagleton's Literary Theory and Introduction, on which I have several lectures available. And then I combine it with either excerpts from the Norton Anthology of Literary Theory or just a reader that I create for my students. So what we do is when we read Eagleton, let's say his uh, part of his chapter on New Criticism, then we go and read the major thinkers and theorists of new criticism, right? So we start with criticism incorporated, right? Um, John Crow Ransom's famous essay about that, Cleanth Brooks essay uh, from the verbal icon. Then, uh, you know, uh, people who wrote about affective fallacy and others. So what we are getting then is a broad discussion of new criticism, which Eagleton provides, how does it rise, right? What were its main characteristics? Why did it rise? What were the challenges posed to it? And then we go and read the original texts of people who were proponents of new criticism. Similarly, as we move into Marxism, then we go and read Eagleton's explanation of it, and then go and read some Marx and some other Marxist scholars. So the idea is that you first understand the methodology itself, what are its main ideas? What are its main practices? Eagleton will introduce you to why and when and where those emerge. And then you go and read major scholars in that field. And so that will give you the deeper knowledge 
of the mecha mechanics of a theory that you might have already learned. And that's the kind of deeper learning that I use. And uh, I find it useful because when the students already first learn about what were the major debates about, a certain, let's say, structuralism, how does it come to be, right? And what were its major assumptions? How did certain people articulate its rules, its logic, right? And then we go and read those people. So if you're teaching structuralism, you have to teach or learn about the linguistic turn. You have to then go and read what Saussure said about linguistics, what Roman Jacobson wrote about it. So my students then read either full essays or excerpts from the theorists who were actually theorizing these methodologies that we talk about. And that's the kind of uh, deep reading I encourage my students to do. Now, this question often comes up. People ask me, you know, what should I, should I be able to do after I have studied some literary theory? So, I mean, the most important thing as a scholar is that you should be able to use a method to read and write about a text. So let's say if you studied structuralism, you should be able to perform structural analysis of a text. But more importantly, I think, as a scholar, when you have learned a theoretical approach, what you should be able to do is extrapolate. And what do I mean by that? You should be able to read, let's say, a critical essay. And after reading the first two, three passages, you should be able to discern where that scholar is coming from. Is he or she a Marxist? Is he or she a feminist? Are they post-structuralist, new historicist? So when you know your theory, you've done the deep reading, and beyond that, when you have read certain critical essays that employ one or the other theory, then your knowledge of theory should enable you to learn where a critical piece is coming from. And what that will enable you to do is it would enable you to understand the critical preferences, biases, prejudices of the scholar his or herself. And then if you're responding to it, you're not just responding to the individual statement, you're also responding to the critical method or approach within which a certain argument is made. Now, how do we get there? I mean, most students find theory really daunting. And my simple answer is regular reading. You know, what I encourage my graduate students to do is to constantly read for their own growth, not just for the classes. So uh, now I don't do it much, but until two, three years ago, I read every single day, at least for two hours. I would read one book carefully, annotate it, consume it, absorb it, understand it, have notes on it. And so what that did was that over the years, that one or two hours of reading every day beyond my work or teaching enable me to constantly keep building my knowledge of theory by learning how someone has discussed something theoretically and then use that theory while talking about a text. So that's um, the key thing. A classroom instruction, just one or two courses are never going to prepare you to learn theory really well. Uh, a course can only give you the basics. But constant reading regularly, maybe make a plan, put it on your notebook. These are the people I need to read in the next two years. And then start reading, start making notes. And what you'll notice is after about three or four years of this practice, you'll start making connections. You won't even know how you're making them but you'll start making connections from one reading to another. Okay. Another aspect of reading that I find really useful is that if, let's say if you're reading a theoretical text and the person cites someone else, note that down. Because that article that you're reading is responding to another person, go read that person as well. So in so many ways, learning theory is also this process of regress where you read something and you realize the theorist is talking about someone else's work because they are responding to it, then you go and read that. And then in a way you're reading forward, but also reading backwards. 
So reading theory and theoretical works is key in learning theory. Second, use literary theory in your writing. Okay, so if you're writing an essay for a class, don't try to just do analysis of the text or look for symbols in it. I know that's the easy way out. Decide yourself, I am going to read this text from a third wave feminist perspective. Then go and learn what third wave feminism is. Then go and also learn who is the major theorist there. What do they say particularly that you can cite, explain, and then apply it to a text. Train yourself as imperfect as it might come out to be to use theory in your writing. And you will realize that when you use it in your writing, you in a way would be concretizing your understanding of it. Because after you've used a theoretical approach or some insights from your theory, you have now practically used it and hence internalized it. At, at least that's what it does for me, you know. More than that, stay curious, right? Keep learning about the newer developments in theory, right? And in this point, you might also want to develop your own repertoire, right? The theory, the field of theory is so vast that you need a general knowledge of all the major debates and schools of thought, but then you need to choose or you can choose, this is what I will follow. So let's say I'm a post-colonialist, right? What all possibilities are there in post-colonialism? You could be a post-colonial Marxist. You could be a post-colonial feminist. You could be a post-colonialist who focuses on eco-criticism. You could be a post-colonialist who focuses on decolonial de thinking, right? Or, or you could just be a post-colonialist, post-structuralist. All of these options are available to you. And maybe, you know, all of us are not Gayatri Spivak, so we can't master them all. So focus on what is it that you're going to learn in depth? In my case, I spent about 10 years learning the basics of post-colonial theory and its major debates. And then I honed my knowledge, let's say, of globalization, of neoliberalism. And since I was also writing about Islam, I then went and read Islamic philosophy, Islamic jurisprudence, so that when I write about a text and I want to use historical insights from Islam, I have a knowledge of that. So I went and read my Al-Ghazali, right? Al-Kindi, Al-Farabi, right? Similarly, in the Western tradition, I went and read people who had written about neoliberalism, like people like Walden Bell or Zygmunt Bauman, right? Um, and so many others. And so that then gives me my specific focus. So to conclude, I hope this is making sense to you. In my classes, I use Terry Eagleton's introduction to literary theory as the guiding text because it gives us the debates of different schools of thought in literary theory. Then to create in-depth knowledge, I go and ask my students, I request them to read major texts from different thinkers and theorists affiliated with a certain school of thought or a certain critical approach. After that, I encourage my students to use the final paper. They have to use two corresponding literary theories to write their paper. So that encourages them to think theoretically about a text and then produce a 16 to 20 page paper. Beyond that, I encourage my students to constantly read so that they develop the insights to extrapolate and understand where is a theorist coming from, right? And then a lifetime of learning theory but most importantly, using it in your thinking about the text, in your writing about the text, and in your you know, reading the text and teaching them. So these are some of the ideas that I have about how to learn theory. I will post a link to one of my courses in the description, and you can just see how I have set it up where we read an Eagleton chapter, and then we read certain primary texts by different literary theorists. And I will also post links to my lectures on generally on literary theory, but also on Terry Eagleton. I hope they are useful to you. And then, you know, if you have any questions, please post them in the comment section. And if you, if I've missed something and you would like me to um, 
do some more or add some more in another lecture, please also post it in the comments. And in, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please do subscribe. I would be grateful for that. And with that, thank you so much. And I will see you next time.